Okay, so in this example, we're being asked to find the function with the following zeros. So notice that we are provided some zeros here. We have x equals 3 and x equals 2 plus i. Now, one of our zeros here is complex, right? This is a complex zero. We have a real part and then an imaginary part. Okay, so since we have a complex zero, we need to make sure that we include the complex conjugate. Right? So whenever you're dealing with an imaginary or a complex zero, you have to include the conjugate or complex conjugate because right, i is the square root of negative 1. Right? i equals the square root of negative 1. So we know that if it's positive i, it also has to be negative i, right? Because the square root is plus or minus. So not only do we have this complex zero, which is 2 plus i, we also have this complex zero, which is going to be 2 minus i, okay? So now we have all our zeros listed, we can work on finding the function that has these zeros, okay? So how we're going to do that is since we're going to put these into their factored form, right, where they came from. So this came from x minus 3, okay? This came from x minus, and we have 2 plus i. This came from x minus, and then we have 2 minus i, and this is all equal to 0. So what you would do, since we have it in its factored form now, we would take each one of our factors, set it equal to 0, and solve, and that's where your zeros are coming from. But again, we're working in reverse. We want to find the function. So at this point, we're going to expand it out. So I'm going to work on these two factors here first, and I'm simply going to expand it out. Okay? So first step, we need to go ahead and distribute our negative inside the parentheses. So writing out our factor that we have here, we're going to have x minus 2 minus i. Then on this factor, we're going to have x minus 2 plus i. Okay? And now we can expand it out. So we're just going to multiply it, right? Let's start with our first term. And we're going to do x times x, which is x squared. And we're going to do x times a negative 2, negative 2x x times i, we're going to get positive ix. Okay. Let's move on to our second term, negative 2 times x, negative 2x. Negative 2 times a negative 2 is positive 4. Negative 2 times an i, we get negative 2i. Okay. Moving on to our last term, negative i times x, we get negative ix. Negative i times a negative 2, that's positive 2i. And then negative i times an i, that's negative i squared. So at this point, we can see if we can cancel out any of our terms, right? So if I look here, I have a positive ix and a negative ix, well, that's going to cancel. All right, I also have a negative 2i and a positive 2i, that cancels. And now let's go ahead and combine our like terms, which we have here. And here, so we're going to get x squared minus 4x, okay, plus 4, and then we have minus i squared. Now, remember what i squared is. We know that i is equal to the square root of negative 1, so if we square both sides, i squared is equal to negative 1. So wherever I see an i squared, I'm going to replace it with negative 1, so we have x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus, and then we have negative 1. Two negatives make a positive, so it's really 4 plus 1. So here we're going to have x squared minus 4x plus 5. Okay? So we just went ahead and expanded that out. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just erase this here, and we're going to now work on this factor. Okay? So let's erase this. And again, here's what we have, and we went ahead and expanded it out. We now have to multiply it by this factor here. So we're going to have x minus 3 times x squared minus 4x and plus 5. Okay, so we're going to go through the same process. We're just going to multiply it out. So starting with our first term, x times x squared is x cubed. x times a negative 4x is negative 4x squared, and then x times 5 is positive 5x. Alright, let's go into our last
last term. Negative 3 times x squared. Negative 3x squared. Negative 3 times a negative 4x. Positive 12x. And then negative 3 times a 5, negative 15. Okay? So, let's see if we can combine any like terms here, which we have here, and also here. So, combining this, we're going to get x cubed, all right, minus 7x squared, all right, plus 17x, and then minus 15. Okay, so here is our function, and I'll go ahead and just write it as f of x, so I'll say f of x equals x cubed minus 7x squared plus 17x, all right, and then minus 15. Okay, so this here is going to be our function that has the following zeros. Okay, and that is it.